Hello, and welcome to the EDA Summit 2023. This is um, a presentation on how event-driven architecture simplifies customer no notifications. Uh, I am Leo Wild, and I'm very passionate about building quality into systems and finding ways to continuously improve them. I love the challenge that comes from dissecting processes and, effect and to effectively eliminate, eliminate waste. This passion comes from one of my main hobbies, which is board gaming, a hobby that has taught me sound strategies while interacting with other ga board gamers from all walks of life. Um, I've been at Tab Bank for 24 years, and I'm currently the enterprise architect at Tab Bank. My other hobbies include traveling with my wife and spoiling my six grandkids. As a financial institution, Tab Bank has a regulatory and customer experience requirement to notify customers of certain events that happen. I'm going to focus on two main categories of notifications, transaction notifications, primarily driven by card transactions and customer no information changes, similar to address changes and like that. Card transactions are quite simply um, going to Home Depot or Walmart and paying for our transaction with a credit or debit card and getting that nice little ding on our phone that says, hey, you've purchased $50 at Home Depot. Uh, that's the, the start of how card notifications went and the backbone of basically customer notifications in its entirety. Um, as customers wanted more information and better clarity about how they wanted their notifications to happen, those notifications became more difficult. Customers wanted to be able to set up a floor limit. They don't care about anything under you know, $50 because that's just their spending money that they have and they're not worried about anything below that. But if something happens on their account for 500 that they weren't expecting, having that notification is very beneficial for them. The other thing that customers wanted to be able to do is exempt transactions, a gym membership or a Netflix subscription or something like that they know happens every month. And so they don't really want to get notified about that. They're more looking for transactions or, or events that happened on their account that they weren't expecting to have happen. So they wanted to be able to exempt transactions and leave them out of the list. Um, and Visa and MasterCard and other card processing companies jumped on the notification bandwagon and started requiring companies to send specific notifications, whether the customer wanted them or not, um, to the customers. A uh, specific one is when the card isn't present at a transaction, like you're doing an online banking per or an online purchase, or you're doing a purchase over the phone. Um, Visa and MasterCard requires financial institutions to send those notifications out to customers as close to real time as possible. These are all great reasons to notify people about how their finances are being used, and they bring specific challenges to financial institutions the need and expectations to have your notifications as soon as possible has been the biggest hurdle. Uh, information change notifications are primarily um, regulatory driven. The compliance requirements say that we have to notify our customers with a letter for their past address and their future address whenever the customer makes an address change. We at TAB have taken this one step further and give the customer the option to have a notification sent to them digitally if they want, either through an online banking push notification or an actual SMS text that goes to their phone. And even though um, a lot of online or address changes are done through an online banking channel, uh, we take the additional requirement of providing a multi-factor authentication and things like that. We also offer our business customers the ability to get a notification to the primary account holder whenever an address is changed on the business account, just to limit the ability for fraud and other features like that. So how, was, how did our architecture look before TAB uh, implemented event-driven architecture? It was a, a little bit of a challenge to implement, um, and this is at a very high level. I'm gonna walk through a couple of these data flows on here, but there's a lot more details underneath, but this is a high level just to get a feel for what's going on. Um, if we have a card transaction come through right here and it goes into our authorization process and it says yes or no, and it'll save that 
transaction into a big monolithic database that has everything, customer information, card information, and all of that. And then address changes followed a different path, but still hit that same monolithic database. And it returned back to the customer that the address change was completed and done. Well, then in order to send the notification before we implemented EDA, um, we would have a cron process run every five minutes every day to go and select those transactions that hadn't been sent out to the customer yet for notification. We would then go through that data and build the notification information and send it out to the customer either through email or SMS, whichever one the customer decided they wanted. And then we would update the database to say that that transaction alert had been sent. And a similar process with the address change notifications, but it was once a day. Um, this again was primary regulatory requirement and it was mainly bent, built to generate a report for compliance to, gen to have those physical letters delivered to the customer. We then bolted on an email notification option in there to send it to the email server and then update the database that that notification was sent. So this worked great five years ago, right? TAB had a much smaller pool of transactions that it was dealing with. And so it could deal with those transactions in, in the intervals that were sufficient for the customer to get the notifications. The customer expectation five years ago wasn't as high as it is today. Um, they were okay with every five minutes getting that notification that, yep, I went to Subway five minutes ago. I'm fine with that. Um, and then sometimes the notifications that were generated, the customer was okay getting those notifications once a day. We received your address change. We're going to process it now. We're going to move your address to this new address. And then they could you know, contact the bank if that was fraudulent or whatever. The biggest change for why this doesn't work today is the customer expectation. Customers expect to be able to have their information real time. <coughs> um, and so they want that information as fast as possible. The other change is they also wanted to be able to add those that granularity that I talked about earlier. They wanted to be able to have that floor limit of $50. Anything below $50, I don't want a notification on. Um, they wanted to be able to add some exemption to that. And so this building in that uh, flexibility for the customer experience really made this batch processing way more difficult to manage and maintain going forward. So TAB needed to find a different solution or a better solution to move our notifications to a more real time and a more customer friendly experience. So we architected our solution using Solace and an event driven architecture because it really fit our the way we wanted to grow our architecture in the future. <clears throat> so you'll see that this initial flow is very similar right here. The customer change the card transaction change and all that still goes into a, a monolithic database at TAB currently, but we added little pieces to those processes that publish information out to um, topics in our Solace environment. So for the card authorization process, we publish out to a card transaction topic. And from there, we can have our card notification process go and pick those transactions off as fast as they come in. It's now dealing with one record at a time. It's much simpler to track and monitor what's happening, how fast will those notifications are building up on the topic and, and all the, the wonderful features that go with having an event-driven architecture and monitoring on those solutions. So now we have the, the transaction on there, the card notification can go out to the customer. It can build its notification information. And then we took it one step further. We actually dropped it again on another notification topic that we can have a, a separate process come through and pick those notifications off and send them out through SMS or email. And that gave us the flexibility to be able to turn off notifications if we wanted during the, the silent hours of, a, of the day 
So we weren't sending notifications to a customer and potentially waking them up at 2 a.m. Uh, on on an address change, for example, and stuff, because it's it's not as critical as a, a real time as a customer card transaction. And then the address change, we did something similar. We published all of our uh, customer information changes to a topic, address, email, phone number, name change. And then we built specific subscribers to those topics to deal with those different changes in the way that was best for the customer. So we have a separate address change process. We have an email change process. And both of those generate a notification that we drop into the topic that our notification process then sends out. The, the benefits of doing this is it really solved a lot of the issues that we were dealing with from our previous process because we're no longer dealing with a large batch of transactions. We're dealing with one record at a time. It's simple to deal with the one record, even if the customer wants something different um, on different transactions and, and things like that. Dealing with one record is way easier than dealing with 10,000 as you're going through things on there. <clears throat> it also gave us the flexibility of plugging in these other features that we could notify the customer on that we couldn't before, right? We were now able to plug in our card fraud monitoring piece into that card transaction topic and real time update our machine learning and AI that we use to monitor for potential for card fraud transactions. We also, we had a request from several of our customers, particularly on the commercial side of the bank to add a failure notification to the primary account holder so that they were able to know ahead of time before their driver or their secretary who was trying to use the card and it failed notified them of the problem. Tab could notify them sooner so that they could get the issue resolved for whatever the failure was. So we plugged in a card failure notification into that same card transaction topic. And add, adding those, that data to the topic also gave us the added benefit of instead of having our processes run in parallel, trying to do notifications, now they're running uh, asynchronously and we're not dealing with potential database collisions as we're trying to update the same record from different notification processes or different things throughout the environment that we have, all of the data we need is published to that card transaction topic or the address or the customer change topic. So using that single topic for the notifications also gave us the flexibility <clears throat> to know where we had potential issues that could show up, right? So if we know that we got our notification out to the customer notification topic, but the customer never received the notification or we didn't monitor that that it went out, we knew that we had a process, we had an issue with our notification process. But if the notification never made it out to that topic, then we knew we had an issue in this part of our process. It made troubleshooting customer notifications way simpler because we could track the endpoints where things were supposed to land and go through things like that. Um, as I stated earlier, this is, uh, this is a continuing journey that we have here at TAB. We're planning on making improvements still to this process. Um, everything can continually improve. Uh, that's one of the, my passions is to, again, make things continually better. So we're still using a monolithic database. Um, we wanna break that down into a domain-driven system so that we have our databases by domains and our topics and queues and things like that dealing with those domain processes. But even then, sometimes data needs to be shared across. So if we have our notification data, that notification data needs to know whether it's gonna pull the customer phone number or the customer email, but it doesn't need to have all of the customer data. So we're gonna add event brokers into our architecture to replicate that data once we break up with that monolithic database into smaller chunks in, so that those other processes that need to look at the data but not manipulate the data can have their own copy of the replicated data using the event brokers. And then we're gonna, uh, we're looking at adding additional subscribers to each of these topics for um, pulling data into our data lake. Um, 
as we get better about notifications and, and adding things like that, the, the drive is, well, how are we doing? A, a, we want to be able to report on it historically and report on, you know, what was the, what were the changes and, the, and things like that. So <clears throat> we're going to be adding additional subscribers and, and things like that to the topic so that we can push this data into our data lake without relying on um, cron jobs and processes that take time and, and run in large batches to make that work better. As I said, the journey is never done. We're always looking forward to making things better at TAB and Solace and an event-driven architecture has really helped solve a lot of those problems that we've had for TAB. Um, and I know that if you guys are looking at doing something like that for your customer notifications, an event-driven architecture will work for you guys also. Uh, thank you for your time, and I hope to hear from you soon about this topic.